Dave Johnson, new owner and CEO of Black Mesa. That's right, you've been bought. First order of business, we're renaming you under the Aperture brand. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're exploring 10 games you didn't realize share a universe. Today's my last chance. This afternoon, I will pay for my mistakes with my life. For this list, we'll be looking at sets of games or franchises you may not have realized share the same world. For obvious reasons, we aren't including any crossover games, events, or DLC. Were you aware of any of these? Is there something we left off? Let us know in the comments. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Vagrant Story and Final Fantasy XII Most Final Fantasy games take place in entirely different worlds, though some receive spin-offs so players can further enjoy them. However, this case is a little bit different. Vagrant Story is set in the Kingdom of Valendia, itself part of a larger world called Ivalice. It features references to spin-off Final Fantasy tactics, but its connection to the larger world was made clearer with Final Fantasy XII six years later. Set in that larger world, it focused on events across three continents, one of which was Valendia. Ivalice has since been explored further in spin-offs for 12, as well as the Stormblood expansion for 14. Vagrant Story was overshadowed by other RPGs that year, including Square's own Final Fantasy IX, so many players may not have realized the connection. Red Faction and Saints Row 2 In the resulting trial, Gat was convicted of one count of attempted murder and a staggering 387 counts of first-degree murder. It's strange to think that a bleak, futuristic game set on Mars and the over-the-top shenanigans of the Third Street Saints could be set in the same universe. The original Red Faction has you lead a rebellion against the oppressive Ultor Corporation, which forces people to mine for resources amidst a plague. As it turns out, present-day Ultor is just as power-hungry and ruthless. The corporation appears in Saints Row 2, where it tries to pit gangs against each other to lower the price of real estate it wants to redevelop. DLC would have you further contend with the vile company, but it appears Ultor persisted, moving to Mars for future wicked goals. Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Shit! Where the hell you been? What? He's talking to me. Ah! Ah! While arguably no one plays Assassin's Creed for the present day sections, one entry did provide a substantial connection to another Ubisoft series. In Black Flag, the modern day portion follows an employee of Abstergo Entertainment, whose CEO is Olivier Garneau. Eventually, Garneau is murdered, though you don't know by whom. Well, jump over to Watch Dogs, where player character Aiden Pierce must complete a mission by killing Garneau. Writer Darby McDevitt stated an actual shared universe would probably be too complex and that this was just a bit of fun. After all, both franchises have included multiple Easter eggs for the other. Regardless, it's neat to see a mystery in one game get a potential answer in another. Hitman series and Kane and Lynch series. While IO Interactive's Hitman series has continued to garner success, Kane and Lynch only lasted for two games. The developer actually began setting the duo up before the release of their first game. In Hitman Blood Money, you can find newspaper articles that reference their breakout. Blood Money released a year before Kane and Lynch Dead Men, but a more obvious link could be found in 2012's Hitman Absolution. During the Welcome to Hope mission, you can find Kane in a bar. And during the mission Birdie's Gift, you'll find Lynch at a firing range. You can even kill both of them if you want. If you don't, they both appear again in later missions. Though you still nuke Lynch. Absolution released two years after Kane and Lynch 2, so canonically, this is their ending. Battlefield Bad Company and Mirror's Edge series. Battlefield is one of EA's biggest franchises, and one entry connects to one of EA's most underappreciated franchises. The original Mirror's Edge follows Faith, a courier who uses incredible parkour skills to illegally deliver goods under the eye of an oppressive government. While running around the futuristic setting, you can come across scrolling news bulletins. 
Some will mention an ongoing war between fictional countries Tazbikistan and Sirdaristan. Sirdaristan played a major role in the plot of Battlefield Bad Company, with a big portion of the campaign taking place there. Additionally, you can find a recording of the Bad Company characters in Mirror's Edge Catalyst. It seems Mirror's Edge is set in the future of Bad Company. Manhunt, Bully, and Grand Theft Auto series. People better come to my funeral. Rockstar loves to include Easter eggs in its games, but some of them definitively link them to the same world. In Bully, you might hear NPCs mention Liberty City of the Grand Theft Auto series, or a Starkweather movie in reference to the villain in Manhunt. However, GTA and Manhunt have far more connections. Carcer City, the setting of Manhunt, is referenced multiple times across the GTA series. Its existence actually predates Manhunt as it was first mentioned in Grand Theft Auto 3. Additionally, in San Andreas, you'll find wanted posters of protagonist James Earl Cash. There's also a plethora of fictional products and stores that prove everything is set in one twisted universe. Nier series and Drakengard series. The far off future setting of Nier and the medieval fantasy setting of Drakengard may seem an impossible match, but they are connected, albeit only just. 2003's Drakengard follows Prince Kaim in a magical quest for vengeance and notably features several possible endings. While Drakengard 2 followed one ending, 2010's Nier was set more than a thousand years after another, specifically the ending that devastated Earth. 2017's Nier Automata was set even thousands of years after that, and is by far the most acclaimed and popular in the series. Paired with the fact that the last Drakengard released in 2013 to mediocre reviews, there may be some players unaware of this connection. Portal series and Half-Life series. I am pleased to see at least you are unharmed, but the Alex fans, her condition is grave. They may both be first-person franchises from Valve, but Portal and Half-Life are quite different in tone and mechanics. Still, there's ample evidence that proves they share a universe. In the first Portal, you can find slideshow presentations that mention Black Mesa, the research facility in Half-Life and a competitor of Aperture Science. GLaDOS will also mention the horrors going on outside and an ominous them, referencing the invasion of the Combine. In Half-Life 2 Episode 2, we see the Aperture-owned research vessel, the Borealis, get attacked. You can actually find part of the Borealis in Portal 2, where you'll also hear the late Cave Johnson rant about Black Mesa. Wolfenstein series, Commander Keen series, and Doom series. <laughs> Given the reboot of the Wolfenstein series, it seems this link isn't quite as strong. But initially, id Software's groundbreaking titles had a really cool connection. According to John Romero and Tom Hall, the original incarnations of Wolfenstein, Commander Keen, and Doom were all part of the same universe. Specifically, the Doom guy was the son of Commander Keen, who was the grandson of B.J. Blazkowicz. Blazkowicz, of course, is the protagonist of the Wolfenstein series. While there isn't a whole lot else in-game that links the trio of franchises, the word of the original creators is good enough for us. Although it is a bit odd considering how much more family-friendly Commander Keen is in comparison to the other two. Firewatch, Gone Home, and Bioshock series. Is it too much of a pain in the ass to bring supplies all the way up to our towers? Despite having different developers, there are links between all three games. In Firewatch, you can find a book in a supply cache written by Terence Greenbrier, failed writer and father of the protagonist in Gone Home. In response, Gone Home developer Fulbright Company included a nod to Firewatch's Overlook restaurant for its console release. Naturally, the connection to the sci-fi heavy Bioshock is stranger still. In the Minerva's Den DLC for the second game, you can play an old, fictional video game called Spitfire. It seems the series continued on. You can find a copy of Super Spitfire for the SNES in Gone Home, as Bioshock 2's DLC was worked on by Steve Gaynor, co-founder of Fulbright Company. The connection seems pretty sound to us. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.